Well, hello there, everybody. How are we all doing today? Hope you're all keeping well. Hope you're all keeping safe. It is so nice, and sunny, and warm here in Northern Ireland at the moment. So much so that I have the curtains closed because we gotta get the videos looking dark and edgy, don't we? <laughs> Yes, how are you all doing? Hope you're all keeping well. Hope you're all keeping safe. If you've been a follower of the channel as of late, you will have seen that I've been sharing more and more content about my main field of photography, which is music photography, where I've been sharing advice, tips and tricks and general settings, so on and so forth, about a subject that I have worked on for quite a long time. Well, it feels like a long time. Some paper around, I tell you. <laughs> But to say I have been blown away from the response relating to those videos is the understatement of the century. So thank you all so much for taking the time to check out me waffling along about something that I've done for quite a number of years now. You have no idea how much it means to me. Thank you so much. And of course, if you are new to the channel here, hi, my name is Mark. I'm a photographer for Northern Ireland, sharing photography related content from tips and tricks, editing, all sorts here. So do take the time to check out the channel channel and while you're there you can like share subscribe and hit the wee bell icon so that you can stay up to date with future videos it's safe to say i have had a lot of amazing moments working in music photography shooting some of my favorite bands having a lot of amazing memories and moments where i actually share one of them in the video in the top right hand corner there but i've also had some not great experiences along the way that have helped me learn as a photographer and a person working within this field and that's kind of why i wanted to share this video i want to just share things that you can avoid if you want to step into music photography that'll not only help you as a photographer but as a person because remember i, I do talk about this quite a lot that people yes do love your photos but they also love you they hire you for you and if you follow along with some of these things that help you get more and more gigs promoters will start to like you managements will start to like you because doing these things help your character and what people see in you this video is all about avoiding these music photography mistakes don't get me wrong I've done many of these things over the years and I still do today. So yep, we're all just gonna learn together. Biggest thing that you want to avoid within music photography is being underprepared or unprepared at all. And I'm not just saying, oh, I forgot to bring my camera or lens or memory cards or anything like that. I'm more talking about when you actually get to the gig itself. So you go down to a concert, you've been granted a photo pass, you go in and shoot the gig, but before you even get there, well, Whoever you've applied through, whether it's a say a publication or through the band management that gets you the photo pass, well, you kind of want to have that confirmation beforehand. So messaging the PRs, the managements, the publications, just checking to see if it's all okay to go down and shoot again. Cause you know, you can't just rock up to the show and expect a photo pass sitting there and you know, you go into the photo pit. No, you need to have that confirmation first. And it's not enough to have that confirmation verbally or anything. You want to have that in writing. So I'll always ask any publication that I'm working with to just have the email sent over to me with the confirmation because there has been moments where my name hasn't been on the list even though I have been confirmed. So it's never a problem just reaching out to your publication and say, hey, do you mind forwarding me over the confirmation list just to make doubly sure that it's all okay. So when you get there, if you get down to the door and your name's on it, you can just pull it up there and they can just go, you know, cross reference it, make a call, whatever, and just say, yep, okay, there you go. It's handy to have those things. Even if it's not needed, it's better to have it. And then once you actually get checked off the guest list, get your photo pass, well, that's the one thing you gotta have as well. Making sure that you have your photo pass on hand in plain sight for the security, for the promotions, whoever is running the photo pit. Because if you go in and there's nothing stuck to your wrist or stuck to your shoulder, well, they're gonna wanna know what you're doing there, why you have this camera. So most of the time it's like a stick on a photo pass. So you can just, just peel it off and stick it to your shoulder or stick it to your leg or wherever. Or if it's a wrist mount, making sure it's in plain 
site so that, that way the security knows you're going to be in the photo pit knows that you're going to be there for the first few songs and you've been granted that access so yeah always make sure that you are prepared before the gig again not so much with your gear but with confirmations as well another thing that you'll want to avoid is just assuming where you're going to put your gear or what you're going to do with your gear because you don't want to go into a photo pit with say if you have a backpack or a bag at all because sometimes photo pits can be quite short and quite cramped and if you have a big bulky backpack on wait it's going to get in the way of other photographers and maybe get in the way with anything else so don't just assume where you know where you're going to put your bag if it is your first gig you can certainly ask the security well where, where can i put this because you don't want your bag or your gear being in the way of say there's an opening band and their gear comes off or any of the gear at all you want to make sure it's completely out of the way it's not going to get destroyed or anything you want to make sure it's in a nice comfortable spot that not only is being protected by the security but is also within eyesight for you so that way you can quickly get to your bag i've seen moments where photographers have just literally dumped their camera bag in the middle of the photo pit and safe to say i was really annoyed whenever i seen that so much so that i went up picked the bag and chucked it over to the site so i have but yeah you want to make sure where you are putting your gig so don't just dump anything willy-nilly just make sure you're putting it away safely and that security are happy enough with where you're putting it this also kind of falls in line with what i want to talk about next and that is avoiding being disrespectful now it's easy to miss what's going on within an area because there's so much going on but if you're walking into a show acting like billy big balls and just acting like a, you're the best thing since sliced bread well safe to say you're not going to get into the pit or you might not get access into pits after that so you want to start being respectful towards your surroundings and when i what i mean by that is being respectful to the security, the management, the promoters. If you're on the guest list at the door, don't just assume that you are on the list. You know, have, again, going back to that confirmation, just instead of go, well, my, I, I had confirmation and you know, don't act like it. Just say, yeah, okay, I have my confirmation here, show it off. Then when you enter into the show and ask security tell you where you go or how many songs you're allowed to be there, you know, saying things like, yeah, no problem. Then when you actually get shooting as well, having respect for the people around you, and that is other photographers, and most importantly, the crowd. Other photographers are gonna be working within the pit. You don't wanna be like elbowing or bashing people. It's really easy to get doing that, and we all do it by mistake. I've done it many a times, but you don't wanna intentionally just elbow somebody out of the way just because you see a shot or anything we're all working together there shouldn't be any feuds or any competition or anything like that so just be respectful to other photographers and be respectful to the crowd because they have all paid to see this show they you know they're happy enough for you going in and working for the first couple of songs but when you're in the pit don't obstruct their view too much like say for example if there's a barricade try not to stand on the barricade just to get because again you're you're blocking people's shots some cases do allow for this like if the band uh, or a band member has gone into the crowd so the crowd are looking the other direction but if everybody's looking at the stage they don't want to see your butt covering their view of the band so they don't there's other things as well that you can look out for and that is like there's nothing i hate more than seeing photographers having their cameras and all up in the air sometimes it's needed because of a stage is quite high but again doing this camera up in the air again obstructs the view of the audience who have paid to see this show so just try and just you know not do any of those sorts of things because again they have paid to see this show where if you've gone in for free for a couple of songs they have more rights to see this band than you do and of course as well we actually have to have to respect the band don't we they have they have their space within the stage they don't want you getting in the way or anything like that i've had points where band members have kicked or shoved me out of the road so I have done because I, I've been oblivious. I don't haven't known what's going on, but I've been in their way and nobody can hear you or anything like that. So I've had the odd foot 
kicking me out of the road. So I have to, or a security guard push me out to the side. So don't be in the way. Don't restrict view for anybody or don't restrict spots for the likes of the band or anything. Just again, it's all about respect. If you show respect whenever you're at a gig, then again, this is what's gonna get you more and more gigs and people like promoters and managements go, he's actually really dead on in the photo pit. I can have him back, no problem at all. And it's all been said and done. You've shot the gig, you've done all these different things. Now we come home and we start editing our photos. And this is another thing that you also want to avoid as well taking forever editing your photographs. If you've just gone out to a concert for yourself, like a local band or anything, you know, there's no strings attached, you're not working for a publication, you've just gone out shooting for the crack, well, you can take as much time as you like, but if the band have seen you at the show, well, they're gonna wanna see those photos. So they are. But working with a publication works a little bit differently because publications, PR companies, they wanna see the content pretty quickly, especially if it's a large show or start of a tour or anything. So a lot of publications will generally give a 24 hour, maximum 48 hour turnaround time for photographs. And it's fine to wanna to put your own style on a photo and all here and there, but don't take forever editing. Just cut down to whatever it is you like. And if there's a certain thing that you do like in photographs, well, pop it all in, you know, certainly put your spin on it, but don't, take forever because anything past that 48 hours for publications they tend to see that as well no that you know that's old news now it's crazy just how not only time consuming but how fast paced music photography is because people are interested in that show and they want to see content from that anything past a couple of days well they're, they're not gonna care so they aren't so don't take forever either editing your photos or sending over the photos. Just have them all done. Like I tend to, whenever I get home from a concert, I back them up onto my computer first. I'll probably get a couple here and there edited up, but I'll spend like a good portion of the day or morning the next day just editing away. Now, you'll not be perfect. I have work. <laughs> There's a lot of times I don't have the time to take editing photos, but if you schedule it within your day, within your time period, and if it is gonna take a bit longer, well, just reach out to the promotion that you're working for and just say, hey, it's probably gonna be a day or two. So then that way they know that they can then tell the band's PRs or band managements, and they can expect that content if it's like an extra day or two. Happy days, as long as people know. But yeah, try not to take forever with your photographs because people want to see it. There is lots and lots of things that I can cover in this video, but these are the more the main points that I wanted to share just from my own overall experience. So I hope this video was helpful for you. If you have any suggestions of what mistakes you want to avoid, well, let me know in the comments down below. Let me know some of your thoughts of what you want to avoid doing when you want to enter into this field or any sort of field of photography. While you're there, don't be afraid to like, share, subscribe and hit the wee bell icon so you can stay up to date with future videos again it's always greatly appreciated that you come along and check out the content you have no idea how much it means to me for now i'm gonna go and try and enjoy as much of that sunshine and warm weather as i can take care everybody and have a good one